Hi everyone, it's Deacon Steve Greco. And Marianne. And welcome, welcome to, to the, the Bible, Bible and you. you. I'm unbelievably excited. I know <laughs> you are. Why are you excited this week? Well, I'm excited because first it's a great teaching again on turning to the Lord, right? Uh -huh. Being made clean, being healed. But it's also the last Sunday before Lent. And I oh. can't wait for Ash Wednesday and Lent to happen because mm. it's a great season. But let's pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you want us to be clean. You want us to be healed. You want us to turn to you no matter what's happening. May we have the faith, Lord God, to turn to you in trial, in tribulation. May we have the faith, Lord God, to say yes to you no matter what's going on in our life. Heal us spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Fill us with your Holy Spirit through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, and I bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the last week, I can say this. Oh, okay. Alleluia. Okay. Alleluia. I think that's why you're excited. <laughs> no, alleluia is in Lent. It's okay. like really a rough Before time. Before we start, I'd like to talk a little bit about the book of Leviticus, because it's not one that, you know, you would open up and read uh, readily. It is actually the book is named after the tribe, the Levite tribe. And it is a book concerning with regulations that about Israeli um worship as well as ordination of priests and their duties and their rights and it also has regulations concerning your bodily diseases which may happen to a person to make them unclean and a menace to the to the neighbors and the people around them and it has rules concerning food legal purity and impurity and uh and we're going to discover this week in the reading um, what it says about leprosy. So this, this is one of the five books of the Torah. It's very important because it, it goes through the rules and regs, as Marianne said, in great detail. In, in a way, it enhances the Ten Commandments because it has tons of commandments. But I have a little trivia question to ask you. Okay, what? What book is the most similar to Leviticus, if there was a book, none of them are totally similar, in the New Testament? Oh, in the New Testament. Hmm. Ephesians? No. No? Starts what? with an H. Hebrews? Yes, in uh, Hebrews. Because uh, in Hebrews, it talks about various regulations and things to do and not do. Not like Leviticus, but it's, it's really... Yeah. Probably the closest, but, oh, okay. but Le Leviticus is in a class by itself, though. Yeah, it's it's hard to uh, <laughs> imagine if you read through it. You see, boy, they had to really follow a lot of details and rules, which made it extremely difficult. And oh, by the way, if you if people are new to Scripture and new to the Bible, don't have them read. You know, start with Genesis, read all the way through. They'll never get past Leviticus. Oh, no, they'll never yeah, get past maybe. Leviticus. Yeah. So Genesis is interesting, but Leviticus is a tough one. It's really you know Hebrew rules and things yeah. like that. But it helps us understand uh, when Jesus comes, what he's teaching and the difference. So that's what we're going for today. So let's start reading mm -hmm. about what it says. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he should be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about leprosy. Actually, uh, what they're talking about was leprosy as well as any skin disease. They didn't have the knowledge to know that if there was like psoriasis or something like that, that it wasn't um, the same. So they had this to protect people. But what happened is if you got it, you were isolated. You can no, no longer go to synagogue or worship God you can't, in, with you a can't community. You can't be seen in, in public. Yeah, and so really it, it is today, it is called Hansen's disease, and we have antibiotics that take care of it. But back then they didn't, and they couldn't tell the difference. So one of the jobs of the priest, and they said go, you know, the priest uh, is the one who diagnoses it. They would look at it, and they would declare you uh, clean or unclean. And then if it went away for a while, you had to go back to the priest to be um, uh, declared cured yeah. four times because leprosy scabs over and it kind of looks like you're being healed, but then it comes back. And so some of the regular skin disease did clear up and they were healed and cured. But after four times of visiting the uh, priest, if they were still unclean, they were unclean. And then it, it goes on it, to say that um, they have to, their beard, uh, they have to wear uh, their beard to muffle their mouth. Right. You know, is what they're talking about. Because they didn't know how they how people caught it. Yeah, right? so they're just trying to cover you, and yet they had to wear ripped clothes. They had to look very different than the rest of the world that was healthy. So, they, And then they had a bell they had to ring. They had to announce their coming. Mm -hmm. So when they walked, yeah. there were bells that went off. And again, well, they had to ring it. They had, yeah, they they had to ring it as they were walking. And they had to say again, unclean, unclean. So this was something, again, that was... Um, you know, really something that that people just were in so much fear of. Well, you can, um, I mean, the, the Jewish people believe that if you had a disease or an illness, that it was really given to you by God because you had done something wrong. Right. So you can imagine the shame that not only was it just shameful for them to be sick, but that they had to... Um, be totally separated from their family members. They couldn't worship God. They were just total, total outcasts. So it was quite a thing. But, you know, there again, this was done to help the community stay healthy and the rules. But uh, we will see when Jesus comes in the gospel, we have another story about uh, a leper and how Jesus handles it and the change of Jesus coming and the difference it makes. Uh, so it it's really interesting, and I think today, if you look at we we don't really have leprosy, although they did not that far away on, uh, I think, of Molokai and and uh, I was just going to say that. You took, yeah. I was just going to say Aloha and yeah. have you guess what it is. And who's the famous priest there? Father Damon. Or is Damien. He a, Damien. Damien. Yes. Is he a saint now, I believe? Yes. Yeah. And so that, that is on Molokai, I believe. Yes. Right? And they were, all the, all the Hawaiians were um, forced to go live on that island, a remote island by themselves. Who and, were leopards, yeah. And Father Damien actually um, went, long story, but he did go there to help and serve them. And he did not... He did not shy away from them, and he did eventually catch it. But he did catch um, it. It's yeah. not that that contagious like they thought it was. But it is interesting to your point that very simple antibiotics now cure it, and so at the time, of course, they had no idea, and so you know all those poor people that were lepers. But Jesus worked with the lepers. Jesus healed the oh, lepers. That comes in the next part. I know, of but I'm Christmas. just saying that, you know, the bottom line is yeah. that Jesus didn't shy away from them. But let's well, wait, before you go on though, I, yeah. I want to say, you know, really think about it today. We may not have leprosy, but we have people that are isolated. Right. You know, and so as we read these stories and these scriptures, uh, think about who's isolated that you know and, and how can you do you reach out and touch them? And, um, you know, so who, because who they're not the closest in our society. Oh, I think it I think there's a lot of people. I think elderly people who don't have yeah. families anymore. They're kind of ignored But in terms of having a disease. Oh, I don't know. Who would you say? AIDS. I don't know if it is anymore. But Not now, but it certainly it was. was. Yes, because we didn't know. Because they didn't know. And so if you had AIDS, you were ostracized. And you would like, get around, get, don't get, well, I mean. I might get even more recently is uh, when we had COVID. 
Uh, Good point. <laughs> you know? Which Didn't reminds you? me. Let me move my chair here. <laughs> I mean, we had to isolate ourselves in fear of getting it. And then if you wore a mask, I mean, I still feel like this. If you wear a mask on the airplane because you might have a cough or something, I think everybody I looks at you. It's like ringing the bell. The you know, first I'm time I had sick. COVID, I was very isolated. Let's put it that way. I couldn't go to anywhere in the house except my room. We were all of fear. And uh, it, it was it was really pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. So so, but, so that's you know that's we did it for a reason. Yeah. But. The, the, the results of it are pretty profound. Amen. Okay, let's go on. I turn to you, Lord, in times of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in, in time times of trouble, trouble and, and you, you fill me, me with, with the, the joy, joy of, of salvation. salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord in, imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn, I turn to you, Lord, Lord in times of trouble, trouble and you fill me with, with the joy, joy of salvation. salvation. Then I acknowledge my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I, I turn, turn to you, Lord, in times of trouble, trouble and you fill me with, with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exult, all you upright of heart. I turn, I turn to you, Lord, Lord in times of trouble, trouble and you fill me with, with the joy of salvation. salvation. Well, you know, to me here, I think one of the key lines here, I would say, is it says, then I acknowledge, you know, he's in trouble, he has sinned. It's a, a, it's, you know, we all sin, you know, but this is about, you know, having the faith to turn to the Lord. But then he says, I acknowledge my sin to you and my guilt I covered not. You know, we have a choice when we sin in a sense that we can hide it and keep it hidden. But the real healing only comes when we don't cover it up, when we confess right. our sins and we deal with it and go on. And God is just sitting and there waiting for us to do it. He's, he still loves us even when we sin, but he wants to be in relationship with us. And more often than not, the people that are sinning are the ones that have isolated themselves. And he, he wants a pure repentance, mm -hmm. a pure reconciliation. Um, psalm 51 is one of the most important psalms, and I really ask that you read it, read it slowly, read it out loud, and it has some things like um, Psalm 51, verse 5, for I know my transgressions, my sin is always before me. Uh, verse 6, against you alone have I sinned, I have done what is evil in your eyes. And then further on, it talks about uh, turn away your face from my sins, verse 11, blot out my iniquities. Verse 12, a clean heart create for me, God, renew within me a steadfast spirit. Um, so again, very, very powerful repentance. Yes. You know, creating something new. This is I think that's one what this most, is talking one about. One of the most yeah. important uh, psalms. Yeah, it, that is what it's talking about, is that turn to him. Confess your sins, go to reconciliation, but have a one-on-one -on -one with the Lord. You know, really be honest before the Lord about what's going on in your life. You know, sometimes I like to say to light it up, to ask him to light it up. Sometimes we know we've sinned, but maybe we're, we're afraid to really look at it. Absolutely. And so if we really go to the Lord and turn to him and say, you know, show me, Lord, where it is I need to look at myself and where I need to change and and what I, I need to do, um, then when we do that, he wants to be in relationship with you and he'll answer you and you'll be filled with the joy of salvation. That's what he really wants. He wants oneness with him. Yes. You know, John 15 talks about the vine and the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Remain in me and I will remain in you. Think of that branch connected with the vine. When the branch is severed, it will, it dies because severed from God, you know, we, we can't get anywhere. So when we turn our back to God, we sever that relationship, you know, yeah. especially for serious sin, we sever the relationship. And so we have to turn back to them, get reconnected with the Lord by going to reconciliation.
Amen. And of course, as we get into the Lenten season, that's a big theme and a big part of what Lent is all about. I think that's why this is one of the readings uh, chosen, all of these. So. Yeah. Um, um, before we start on the next reading, I'd like to share a little bit about Corinth. Please. This, this letter is from Paul to the Corinthians. They were um, a pagan, very pagan city, a port city, and it, there was a lot going on of, of sin and pagan. Temples were there, and they sacrificed animals to the gods. And the meat, which was not burned as part of the sacrifice, was often sold at the marketplace. Yes. And in the pagan religion, they believed that if they ate the meat that was sacrificed to the gods, that they were somehow connected in communion with God. Well, that was kind of a problem for the the Jews who were converted and the um, even the pagans who converted Christianity because they didn't know whether or not to eat this meat. If, you know, am I sinning to, if I eat this? And it's right. a really good question. I think they thought it would mean that they're participating in that sacrifice. And so Paul has a general answer here for them saying that, you know, all the earth is... Uh, you know, God is in charge of all the earth. But let's get into it. When we read it, we'll get into more detail of what Paul says to that. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, the first line, whatever you do, eat or drink, whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. That should be our daily prayer, you know. Well, that is one of the most powerful, yeah. powerful verses in Scripture in the New Testament. Everything we do, every second of every day, our thoughts, our words, our actions, there should be a purpose to it. A reason to do it. I know, you know, I was trained in business um, that as an executive, that everything you said had to have a purpose to it. In other words, you don't say anything capriciously, just off the cuff, that there'd be a purpose, a reason to say what you do. Well, if you think about that, there needs to be a reason as to your actions. To do what you say. To do what you <laughs> say is, is basically where do you spend your time? Yeah. What do you talk about? What do you think about? What do you try to accomplish? All of that should be for the glory of God. Okay, then he goes on and he says, avoid giving a, a offense, whether to the Jews or the Greeks or the church of the God. What he means there is, um, as Christians, we have the obligation to give a good example by doing what is right. Then he says, if you're invited to a kosher meal, eat kosher. And if you're invited to a pagan meal where there's meat, Eat, eat the meat because right. it's it's God's all together. Right. But here's where it comes to the rub. We are not to do it if, let's say, we were in a situation where you were in a, a pagan, and they're they're serving meat and they make a big deal about mm -hmm. it, serving meat and and this is to our God and, and blah 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 and then and then. They're looking at you thinking, here's this new convert, and if he eats our meat, then he really doesn't believe. So he would, you would be scandalizing the, the pagan, in a sense, by showing them uh, that you're doing something wrong accordingly. So we have to watch what we do, and sometimes we have to weigh uh, how it looks. Just like if, if let's say, I had to... Um, eat something before mass because of my health mm -hmm. and um, I was there and someone didn't know that maybe a little kid and he wanted to eat and his mother said no you can't eat before you you receive communion and they saw me eating a donut on the way in or something that was in a sense scandalous it wouldn't be the it wouldn't be good because what, what kind of donut I don't itty donut. Oh, okay, just checking. <laughs> but it wouldn't be good because it would scandalize the child to think, well, look at uh, the deacon's wife's eating the donut. Why can't I? <laughs> and so we have to we have to weigh and watch our actions and what we do and when we do it. You know, it would be okay if you have a medical issue to do that, 
but I probably could have done it at home rather than eating it where some little kid might see it and not Well, understand. it's really important that we not be scandalous by yeah. our actions, our thoughts, our words, by our speech, you know, telling jokes that are off color, um, you know, swearing. I mean, doing things in front of people where people look at you knowing that you're a Catholic, yeah. knowing you're a Christian, you know, maybe even saying things again that maybe borderline and pure or whatever it might be. Whatever it is, you need to be the example, the example of righteousness right. doing God's and will. And to really scandalize someone it means to right. really turn them against ever wanting to become like a Christian, right. you know, or, or, and to believe in your faith. So we do have to be careful, and that's what Paul is saying. Don't get hung up if you're, if you're just at a setting, you know, eat the kosher meal, eat, <clears throat> eat, the, eat the meat, but, you know, watch, watch the circumstances. And he says, because I tried to please everyone. He's always taking that into consideration, Paul. Mm -hmm. And he, because he wants everyone to be as Jesus and, and God wants everyone to be in the kingdom of God. We don't want to be a stumbling block for them. We yeah. are ambassadors of the Lord. Paul talks about that. He says, imitate me because I imitate Christ. You know, we need to be examples to other people. Right. He says we really are about bringing people to to God. And so we should be an example. And sometimes we have to do things a little differently Amen. in a situation. So I think that's really if I were to ask you today, my audience, I'm not asking you because I know you, you're mm. on in this. If I were to ask you, did you what did you do today for God's glory and honor? You know. I did the Bible and you. Okay. But, but you know, ask yourself that. You know, did, did I do something? Because at the moment a Christian is baptized, you're dedicated to God's glory in every act mm -hmm. of a Christian in, in the every day. Uh, whether it's you're working, you're, you're having fun, you're doing sports, you, you know, whether you're sleeping or you're having joy or sorrow or, you know, it's how do you live your day? Mm -hmm. And really, that's what Paul's saying in this reading. And um, I, I got this great line. There are many saints in heaven who did nothing extraordinary in their whole lives, but they lived honestly and well. They did the ordinary exceptionally yes. well. So. Yeah. And um, it, it would help us maybe if we just started our morning uh, before we started saying each morning we offer our day to honor and glory. God. I like to say I consecrate my day to you, oh, Lord. That's good. I consecrate my day. The Lord yeah. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. A leopard came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, if you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed, that will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, here we have the leper, and we talked about leprosy. This man is, is uh, isolated. He can't go to synagogue, and he's come to Jesus, and he's kneeling down in the most humble position, mm -hmm. and he said, if you wish you can make me clean. He had the faith. He was just saying, if you want to, Jesus, you know, I know you can make me clean. And, um, and what is that? That is called faith. Yes. See, faith is what moves mountains. Faith is a, a prerequisite of healing that you have to believe. Now, you may still believe and not be healed in the way that you think you will be. But he's asking the question, knowing the fact that he believed that Jesus can make him clean. Right. Jesus, again, acknowledged, seeing the faith, he said, I do will it, me being clean. You know, according to the rabbis at that time, the healing of a leprosy was a very difficult, uh, is as difficult as raising the dead. And we know Jesus did both of those. And there were a lot of um, lepers in Palestine at that time. 
And this guy was probably living near Capernaum and he had heard what Jesus had been doing, healing and throwing out demons. And he was filled with hope when he approached him. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it goes on and it says, Jesus moved with pity. He stretched out his hand. Now, it was illegal to touch an unpure person. Yes. And Jesus, this is this to me is the most powerful line. He reached out to touch this man. He didn't care that he would yeah. become impure because you know why? When Jesus looks at us, he doesn't look at our sin or our our faults and our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. He looks at us as who we were created to be. Amen. He looks at us with love and all the wonderful things. So when he reached his hand out to that leper, he was reaching him hand out seeing a healed, cured man. Amen. A Amen. man who is pure. And he did it. And and then he says, don't, you know, in Luke he says this a lot, don't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. And of course they all go blab it to everybody. And um, he, 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 he was filled with excitement. You think, well, it's kind of rude. Jesus Jesus told him not to, but, mm -hmm. you know, he was doing it. And he said to Jesus, told him, go show yourself to a priest, you know, be purified, go through the process. And um, mm -hmm. so anyway, that, you know, he went out and there people just kept coming more and more to Jesus. And he had to, he was teaching in synagogues and stuff. And he had to find spots outside now because the crowds were so big. And when he started preaching outside, he started using parables for some reason. We don't know why. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so it's. I think it's a very um, important story to realize that Jesus reaches out and he he's just ready for us, waiting for us. I'm to not ask. sure I've ever seen you so animated. I know I really like this scripture. Uh, I, <laughs> I walked into this going, man, I don't know what I'm going to say, and you're sitting there going nonstop, which is great. You well, know? I'm just so. I mean, Jesus has so much love for us. He's just waiting for us to ask him. Yeah, that's to, great. And he's just and he's reaching out, even even if we have the ugliest sin, whatever we've done, he doesn't care. He just wants us to turn to him. Yeah, and we want to, you know, Jesus said, don't tell anybody, which is obviously a little controversial on why he did that. But he didn't want people to come after him for his miracles. He wanted them to come after him for to turn their life to God. You right. know, that's he really the main thing. He wanted to hear about, the, you know, yeah. eternity and the eternal life. And he, he had all that to teach, and he didn't want him to get up caught up in miracles and we've talked about this before some yeah. people just go around wanting the excitement of the healing and the miracles Boy, and we've they seen never, that, haven't we they walk away and they never it never changes their life jesus wants transformation we have seen you know god has blessed us because we've been in the in the business of healing because jesus is a healer but the application of jesus love and healing and we've seen i mean everything you can possibly think of instantaneously healing of cancer, of hearing, of eyes, of being able to walk, I mean, on and on and on, because that's what Jesus does. Um, and, and then people might come back once or twice, but they rarely keep coming back. You know, well, I'm healed, so I move on. It's like the 10 leopards. One came back. Nine said, okay, I'm on. I'm out of here. Then I'm out of here. I'm <laughs> on to the next thing. But, you know, the question is, if Jesus has touched you in some way, what have you done with it? You know, what have you kept? Did it transform you? Because he he heals us out of compassion and and sometimes to make a point in a teaching or whatever. But but we need to look at it and say, how has this encounter with Jesus changed me? Well, everything is for the glory of God. Yes. Everything, and everything is to get us connected to God. So He wants to heal us spiritually most of all. He wants to heal us so that we can understand yeah. how much he loves us and turn our lives over to him. But he wants to heal us spiritually, emotionally. And yes, many times we are healed or sometimes we're healed physically, but that's really the least important to Jesus. Jesus does these miracles to show his love, his power, that he's indeed the Messiah at the time of Jesus on earth. But today we get healed because he knows what's best for us. And sometimes it is to be healed physically. Sometimes it's not. But we always are to, are to be healed spiritually. So I would say to, the, to our listeners here, you know, don't let sin isolate you. 
don't let turn your back on the Lord and say he could never forgive me or, you know, I've, right. it's been too great or you're feeling uncomfortable about going to reconciliation or whatever. Don't let it get in your way. This, uh, you know, you should have the faith of, of the leper who goes and asks him to be healed, um, to, to know that uh, Jesus wants a relationship. He's just waiting to stretch out his hand to you. He wants you to be in community. We're created for community. That helps us with our faith, you know, with the Lord as well. So uh, just, you know, look for those opportunities to turn back to the Lord and know that he's just going to stretch out his arm no matter what you've done. So as we enter into this Lenten season this upcoming week, ask yourself, how can I get close to God? That's May Almighty God bless you with every spiritual blessing. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Deacon Steve Greco. And Mary Ann. And you've, you've been, been on, on the, the Bible, Bible and, and you. you.